QuickBooks Online 2022 Bank Reconciliation Opening Balance Problem. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file we set up with the 30-day free trial. Holding control down, scrolling up a bit to get to that 125% currently in the homepage, otherwise known as the Get Things Done page. Something you can do by going to the cog up top and then the switch to the accounting view down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views, either here or by jumping over to the sample company file currently in the accounting view. Back on over, we're going to open a few tabs to put reports in. Tab up top, right clicking on it, duplicating that tab. Back to the tab to the right, right clicking on it, duplicating it again. As that is thinking, let's jump on over to the sample company file to see where the reports are located in the accounting view, right on the left hand side where it says reports. There they are. That's where they'll be located. That's where their house is. Going back on over second tab and the business view reports located in the business overview and then the reports. And then we're going to close up the hamburger sheet, the big balance sheet. And we don't need to do a range change, or I do, I do need to do a range change. It's the date, it's now February here. So 010122 to 013122, the first month of our practice problem. Run that report. Tabbing to the right, and then we're gonna go back down to the business overview once again. Close up the hamburger, and then we will open up the profit and loss, the P and L, the income statement. Change that range, change that range from 010122 to, uh, to 013122, 0131, first month run in it. Okay, back to the balance sheet. That's where our focus is. I'm gonna focus down even further on the balance sheet to that cash account because we're reconciling the cash account, reconciling our balance as of the point in time being January 31st, 2022 to what is on the bank statement and the outstanding items, the outstanding checks and deposits typically being the reconciling items. To do that, we've been entering data on the left-hand side here finding that reconciliation process. It's in the bookkeeping area. If you were in the accounting view, by the way, it would be in the accounting area. And then we're going into the reconcile at the bottom and we've been doing the reconciliation. So we're gonna resume, resume the reconciliation process. Closing to get this thing out of here. Don't show me this again. Don't do it again. If I'm going to hit the carrot drop down, so you'll recall that this number was the statement balance that is on our statement ending balance as of January 31st, 61 to 41. And then we have the activity that we put into place, which is the cleared items, the beginning balance. This is where our problem is. The 25,000, notice that that doesn't tie out to my beginning balance here. How can I reconcile? if my beginning balance doesn't tie out. That's the, that's the thing. And then I've got 106,829 on the payments, which is not the same as the items here because I couldn't find these two. I couldn't find these two on, uh, on my books. And then this one, the 143,785 is what we have here. So we've got that problem. But is it really a problem? Because like I said, we've got everything checked off here. Like this is a, this was an issue, but, and I couldn't find these two, uh, but I found everything else and I made them all yellow ties them. I ticked them all off. They're all ticked off now, but I don't care if they're ticked off. And then we're gonna close up the, the triangle. But now it says I'm in balance. It says I'm in balance. So I could kind of stop there and go forward. And that would be that would be kind of fine because then everything will roll forward from that point in time. But it would be nice within the, the accounting system if you kind of reconciled or saw what that difference is so that we could basically see it. So I would like to be able to actually check these two items off in the current books as having been reconciled in the month of January. And I would like to have the proper beginning balance or at least to, to replicate in essence what the beginning balance will be with something I can check off over over here on the bank reconciliation. So what happened then? What happened is that uh, this beginning balance was from the prior accounting system 
where we had a difference between the bank balance and the book balance as of that point in time. We had to put it into our system based on what was in what was on the books because we had to be in balance and there was 25,000 in our system that we needed to put the beginning balance into our system at 25,000 so that we were in balance. But that 25,000 we put in place was correct for our bookkeeping balance but not correct with regards to the bank balance because there were outstanding checks uh, at the point in time of the end of December or the beginning of January. And obviously those outstanding checks are these two items. So these two items represent the outstanding checks. So those two problems reconcile them out if all those outstanding items happen to clear in the following month, which is quite likely. And that's why it nets out, nets out to, to zero. But what I'd like to do is put these two into the system so I can show them as having been something that cleared in the current time frame, even though they were entered into the system in the prior period. To do that, I'm going to look in, I would have to look into my prior bookkeeping, actually look these checks up as to when we wrote the checks. And it would be sometime before the cutoff date, in our case, January uh, 1st of 2022, it'd be most likely sometime in December. So I'm going to go and I'm going to put those in those two checks in as of the date they were written, not the date they were cleared, and then clear them as of this point in time, then I can also change my beginning balance. In other words, I can change my beginning balance to represent the 25,000 cleared balance. And then I can put these two checks on the books, which will decrease in essence, that balance back down to the 25,000, uh, but be able to check these two off in the current time frame, allowing me to see the activity of these two items actually clearing in the current period and being able to see that current balance at the proper cleared balance of the 30,000. Okay, so let's see how that would work. Let's go back on over and say, okay, well, how, how in the world are you going to do that? Well, let's, let's leave here for now. Let's say, let's say I'm gonna leave, uh, leave this, save for later, save it for later. And then I'm gonna hold up, I'm gonna open up the handbook and then we're gonna be in the bookkeeping area again. Let's go into the register the chart of accounts and then the register closing out the hamburger and then I'm just going to go into the cash register I don't want the bookkeeping help here we're going to close that and we're going to go into the view the register view the register so there we have it and now I'm going to imagine I'm looking up these these two checks and I'm going to put them in our system as of the point in time that we actually wrote the checks and then I'm going to go down to the beginning balance we put in place, which is all the way down here at the 25,000. And I can actually adjust that 25,000 to 30,000. So once again, this is going to go up. You could, you could change this to 30,000 and then record the other 5,000 as the two checks, which will take it in essence back down to a net balance of the proper 25,000, but broken out into the three items. So let's see what that will look like. Let's go up top and say, okay, I'm a little worried. I'm a little scared. It'll be okay. We can do this. I'm going to hit the drop down and we're going to say this is going to be a, a, a check. Do I want it to be a check? Is it a check over here? It's uh, it has no check number. Let's just make an expense form. Let's make it an expense form. Is that what I have here? I want to make it an expense form. And then this is going to happen, let's say, as of the prior period. So let's, let's, let's say it was on uh, 12 25 to 1 prior year not when it cleared that's important we're not putting it on when it cleared in january but when we wrote the check or processed the transaction which would most likely be a check if it took that long to clear but in any case we're going to say then the payee i'm going to say is epiphone epiphone and this is going to for prior period check and i'm going to just put that in there and the payment is going to be for four thousand and the other account, now Epiphone is who we buy our inventory from. So it's most likely that the other actually went to inventory, but I don't want to post anything to inventory because when we set up our beginning balances, the beginning balances were correct. So in essence, I just want a clearing account for this, these transactions to wash out because once I enter the three transactions, they, could, they should basically wash each other out so that the other account we go to will be zero. We could go, to, we're going to take it therefore to some equity account and we could put it just into the owner's equity, but possibly that opening balance equity is a perfect clearing account for us to use because we are in essence doing the beginning balance here adjustments uh, for these open items 
for the reconciliations, the uncleared items. So let's put it into opening balance equity, opening balance, opening balance equity. Can I, am I, isn't that what they call it here? Or beginning balance, beginning balance. We'll call it beginning balance, beginning balance. So that's the one we're going to put it in here. That's a clearing account. After we do these three transactions, that should go back down to zero. So let's go ahead and save it. And then I'll do the same thing for the other one. I'm going to hit another expense account. This one I'm going to say happened, let's just say on the 26th of the prior period. So now I'm looking at this check here, the second check. I'm going to put that in place. And this one, let's say it was for Gibson USA, just for example purposes, prior period check we're going to say. And this one was for 1000 And it's going to go also into the beginning balance account. So those two go into the beginning balance account. Now we're going to adjust the beginning balance that went into cash. If I go down below, that's this 25000 to 30000 which will be the other side, which also went into beginning balance. If you're not comfortable doing this, you could add another transaction, which would simply then record, uh, record the the 5,000 to beginning balance so you can see it in two accounts. And then you just have to check off two accounts uh, as you start off. But I'm gonna go ahead and change this. I'm gonna say, let's try to make this 30,000 and then I will save that. So we'll save it. The transactions you are editing has been reconciled. Uh, it hasn't yet been reconciled because we haven't finished it. So I'm gonna say yes. And so there we have it. So now, We've got that 30,000 here instead of 25,000, the 1,000 and the Epiphone I put on for 40,000, which is wrong. Let me change that. I know you probably, you've been telling, you're trying to tell me you added another zero. You added too many zeros. Okay, I fixed it. I fixed it now. 30,000 for 5,000 difference and here's the 5,000 down here. So that should basically wash out if I go to my, to my uh, balance sheet and I refresh this. I'm just going to run it back and run it back. Hold down control, scroll up a bit, go on down, go on down to the beginning balance area. And then here's the stuff that happened uh, in the beginning balances. Let's then go on back to the prior period. Let's say, let's say, uh, let's do this 0101. 21 to 12 31 to 1 this is before we actually started our current information this is when we entered the beginning balances so now we've got that 30,000 that is here instead of the 25 that's washing out against these two expenses that brings it in essence back down to 25 and so the total is back down to zero okay so going back up so now now then we can go back to the reconciliation so I'm going to go back to the first tab, open up the hamburger, and I'm going to go down to the bookkeeping area again. And this time go to the reconcile. I'm going to reconcile things. You got to reconcile. So we're going to go into there and then close the hamburger, resume the reconciliation process. The process may now resume. The process may now resume. So now we're off by 5,000 because that beginning balance, let's open up the carrot right here, beginning balance is now correct. So now if I was to check all this, this stuff off, we got the beginning balance. So we, we're at the same starting point. I can kind of check that off and say, yeah, that checks off. And then we've got all of the 143, 70, 85. That's the increases. That checks off. That checks off. And then we got the 111829. The one one we don't have that because we got to check off those last two which are right here now they're in the prior period but they cleared in the current period so they were outstanding that's the issue checking those two off check 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 double check and now we're at the one one eight two nine so the one one eight two nine there it is so that means that the ending balance that we have to has to work it has to reconcile so we're at the cleared balance now of the 61, 241, 85. The cleared balance represents the ending balance on the, on the bank statement. So you can think about that as, in essence, the bank statement balance. In our case, in our books, it's the cleared balance because it's the one that we checked everything off on to clear. What we're looking for now are the uncleared items because the uncleared items 
are the items that are going to be the reconciling items taking us from the cleared balance or bank balance and tying us to reconciling us to the bank balance which is what is now represented on our books here in the good old cash account the 88 uh, 645 25 so that's where we stand now now next time i'm going to actually we want to look at the report so i'm actually not going to finish it i'm not going to finish it quite yet i'm going to finalize it next time because i want to look and review the reports next time it's like you're really dragging this out i know but i want to look at the reports next time and sometimes they kind of adjust or the reports for the reconciliations you got to keep track of those because um you know you might want to print those out so you have a static copy of them in essence because they're a little bit different than other uh reports and we'll talk more about that next time so i'm not going to finish it yet man really not yet next time we're going to save it for later next time we're going to we're going to be back here so make sure to do that because next time we're going to hit that green button so you won't want to miss it.